Hey everybody, today we're going to do another Locked on Bama, a despondent Locked on Bama. And um, because it was awful last night, there's no other way to say what we watched last night when it comes to the SEC tournament. It's one of the most disappointing losses. And here I am in Columbus, Ohio, uh, waking up very early in the morning so as not to wake my wife and child. And I have come down to this empty banquet hall to record this for you, the people. So Jimmy and I will get started right now and we will bitch just as much as you expect us to. You are Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey again, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me. Jimmy Stein, that's also him. Jimmy, how are you today? Well, I'm excited for spring football practice, but I suppose we're going to talk about basketball. We are, and uh, history has proven that uh, our numbers aren't as great when it comes to just a full basketball pod that the people want to hear about football. But I'm going to complain for three segments today. So if if you don't like people complaining about basketball performance, this ain't the pod for you today, bro. Come back another time. We will be back. But, Jimmy, you know, I was thinking this morning about some of the, the awful uh, disasters throughout human history. The Hindenburg, the great Pacific Northwest trash heat that floats in the ocean, Ishtar. And now... And now we also add Alabama versus Vanderbilt in the SEC basketball tournament 2022. I'm here at the at the lovely Doubletree in Columbus, Ohio, at the Nate Oates Appreciation Banquet. <laughs> you can see there's, there's nobody behind me. <laughs> um, I, I, I kid, I kid. I still love Nate Oates. Don't get me wrong. I, I love Nate Oates. I do. And I want him to do, sign a lifetime contract. I'm fine with that. Last night was abysmal. Um, Jimmy, I, and I'm just going, let me ramble here for a second, then I'll let you ramble. But, um, you know, it, it, I, I thought about how when Alabama football team, I think it was 2017, was uh, trash talked by Vanderbilt before the game, they came out and beat them so badly. They sent five of their guys to the regular hospital. Three of their guys quit football, and two of their guys actually went to children's hospital. That's right. They reverted to being children because we beat them so badly, because we don't put up with that. This basketball team allowed Scottie Pippen, who I tweeted out, gets more whistles than Marilyn Monroe walking by a tra- uh, construction site. They let him trash talk them, and then – without really scoring much from the field, doing all his damage from the free throw line, they let him single-handedly almost lead Vanderbilt to victory after we had a, what, 14 or 15-point lead? There's no there's no redeeming quality about this game. This, this was not, oh, well, if this had happened and that had happened and if we could have, you know, found our groove here. There's nothing to pull from this that's good. Nothing. Well, uh, JD played pretty well. I mean, he he did. I mean, particularly the first. Got to remember the first twenty five minutes of the game. Alabama played really well. Not just pretty good. I, I thought Alabama played really well. I also think too many people confuse a bad result with not playing hard. I I, I thought Alabama played hard. Uh, I play, again for twenty five minutes. That was good. They they were beating a good team that have been playing good basketball for three weeks by 15 points. And it, it, despite being in some foul trouble, despite Quinterly not playing many minutes because of foul trouble, again, 25 minutes in the game was great. The last 15 minutes was just abysmally terrible, just absolutely horrible and not so much effort. I think they were a little shell-shocked. But they've they've played that way all season long. When things go bad, they go really bad. They gave up 46 points in 14 minutes. 
46 in 14 minutes. That's hard to do against that. That's just hard to do if if we just weren't on the floor and just let Vandy just do a layup line for 14 minutes. Uh, that that's crazy bad. If you give up 46 and a half, you've given up 92 in a game. They gave up 46 in 14 minutes. And and, and the, here's the worst part of beyond that, how bad that is. Here's the worst part. I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm not surprised. I'm not like, wow. I'm like, well, there you go. My Boy. wife watched the first half and literally went to bed saying something like, well, looks like they got this one. I'm like, spoken like someone who has not watched this team play much. <laughs> and she's like, really? No, she was like, oh, sorry about that. She she was like, really? Like, we would lose this? And I'm like, oh, this is far from over. And you because know, not that I expected it, but I, I just wouldn't have been surprised. And, and here I am. I'm upset and frustrated, disappointed. But am I surprised? No, not at all. Jimmy. The last 15 minutes were so bad that it made me forget about the first 25 minutes. You're right. They did play hard. I, I, I shouldn't say there's no redeeming factor. Also, by the way, just as a complete side note, I realize that the last 15 minutes of that game was about the video production equivalent of this podcast because right now <laughs> I'm in the an empty banquet hall and the lighting is so bad on me. I'm, I, I did the face app. You know, they like can see how you look when you get older. And it told me, we can't go any older than the way you look right now. <laughs> like, we can't project you to look any older. We, you've reached your limit in this lighting. 125 um, is as far as this app will go. Uh, but anyway, they did play pretty hard. But, man, again, um, you hate to call out anybody specifically because this was a team failure. And a staff failure, by the way. I mean, I, I do love Nate Oates. I do. I want him to stay forever. I want him to always be there. But, man, I think it's fair to say he has not figured out at all, and nobody on this staff apparently has figured out how to reach this team in any capacity. There's nobody who has stepped up to be a leader. Once again, we're shooting free throws late. We were shooting free throws poorly all game, so maybe this isn't fair. I mean, our free throw percentage, I think, for the game was somewhere around 55%, which is abysmal. It's, it's just stinky. And we shot 30-something. I mean, that's another thing. The whistles were crazy. I mean, there were 81 free throws shot in this game or something ridiculous like that. Um, at a I, I'm fine if there are 81 free throws, if we're really going to start cleaning up college basketball. I'm fine with that because I think everybody will adjust. I'm not fine with it in today's college basketball because you're not supposed to call 81 free throws right now. Nobody's doing that any time. Um, anyway, um, you know, Quinterly had a shot late to, to make some big free throws. Didn't make them. Um, some other guys had shots late to make some big free throws. Couldn't make them. Uh, just – and I'll tell you, the, the whole thing started to me. I could see the meltdown coming. When I think it was Betty Ako had a nice interior pass to Juwan Gary for a bunny of a layup. Yeah. I mean, most people would dunk it in, in Division One college basketball. And Juwan Gary just went in for the layup, and I was thinking, okay, I'd rather him go in for the easy layup than the 1% chance he misses the dunk. I, I It never dawned on me in that millisecond that it happened that he could miss that layup. He didn't just miss it. He missed it badly. It rolled off the rim. That was an easy – I mean, all, all layups are easy. I mean, layup is synonymous. We use layup as a term, even non-basketball, in our lives, at, at, right. at work, at home. Something that's super crazy easy is a layup, right? It wasn't just a layup. That, that, that was just – that was as easy of a shot as possible in the sport. And Other was, layups think that was a layup. <laughs> you know, um, and then I think Vandy came down and hit a three right after that. I think, or either yeah. that, or they got an and one or something. I mean, it was so and layup. It yeah. was slightly more difficult than Juwan's, but JD yeah. missed a layup on the very next possession. That's right. Um, okay, Jimmy, hey, uh, go, ahead. go ahead. I was about to rant. I was about to well, rant, but don't but, rant yet because I got to do a live read. Yeah, and do wanna, a live read. I want to tell you about built bars. I love these things. I wish I had brought one with me to Columbus, Ohio. I'm starving. I didn't get in until 1 o'clock last night. I could have used a built bar. I forgot my built bars. But this is the time of year you usually give up on your New Year's resolutions. My New Year's resolutions was to quit complaining about Alabama basketball. Uh-oh. 
that's over. But I have stayed to my resolution of eating better and eating built bars more often because they are good to keep you feeling. I've lost a little bit of weight. Love them for that. The, have you tried their puffs? They're absolutely delicious. You need to go get you some. These built bar puffs are fantastic. They're pr protein infused marshmallow, which sounds almost something alien. That's so good. Uh, they have all kind of kick ass flavors like cinnamony, yurt churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie, all these awesome flavors. Go to built.com, use promo code locked15. That's built.com, use promo code locked15. Go get you some of these puffs. I'm telling you, you will not regret it. You'll love it. And then tweet at us about how awesome they are and about how right we are about this. Go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15. That's promo code LOCK15 at built.com. Jimmy, you may rant, my friend. It's a, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rant calmly about this, but I'm not going to call any basketball players out by name. I'm not going to do that because it's not I, – I don't, I don't like it. But I will, however, have a rant while I'll let you guys fill in your own names. And I'm not even going to mention basketball. I'm just going to say this about sports and about our favorite team, which is Alabama, the football team. The best players on the football team are Will Anderson and Bryce Young. I think we all agree that that's true. They're the best two guys, the best two players on the team. They are also leaders. They're Saban bots. They're driven. They lift the play of their of the of the team around them. They're good people. They're good guys. They're 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 who who your your daughter you know should 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 marry. They're great people and and they get it done and they're the best players and and they're Saban bots. And I'm not even going to talk about I, I, that's my rant about basketball. The best players on the football team consistently, really throughout the whole Saban dynasty, frankly. But the best players have always been also the best guys. That's the my best rant. Teams. Yeah, on the best teams, you're absolutely right. I think you're right. The best Saban teams, yeah, and for that's sure. That's my rant about basketball. Y'all, y'all, yeah. y'all, y'all fill in names and 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 get what i'm talking about and, and let me let me add this let me go on a little bit of a rant here too you know one thing i don't want to see i don't i'm tired of don't don't do this anymore guys i mean just don't it, it makes you look kind of foolish uh, you, you know when okay if somebody if a friend comes to you and says you know i can tell something's troubling you why don't, would you open up about it and you're like when I don't want to, because I mean, you know, it, you might think it's stupid. And your friend's like, no, trust me, I open up about it. And so you open up about it and your friend goes, that's stupid. And you're like, hey, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't told you it was probably stupid, but I'm opening up. I'm being vulnerable here. Um, what I don't like is the basketball team. That This may not have anything to do with that. Again, I'm on little sleep, people, so just deal with me. What I'm sick of is some of the basketball players, and again, I won't fill in their names, you probably know who they are, have gone on Twitter and other social media and saying things like, oh, if you're not gonna be with us on the lows, don't be with us on the highs. Okay, I, I bought into that mid-year when they had some bad losses and I was thinking, okay, I like the attitude. And they've kept doing it. You, you can't keep doing it if you don't ever come back from it. <laughs> don't get on social media today and say, well, we're just, you know, it's a, it's one small setback for a large comeback. Don't do any of that. Go, you have to go prove something now. You can't just have metaphors and cliches and put them on social media and think everybody's supposed to just go, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You got to go out there and complete the deal on a game against Vanderbilt. You got to go out there and beat Texas A&M at home. You got to do those things. I mean, you don't have to do them if you, let's say, had you know beaten Georgia on the road like everybody, literally 25 other teams did. <laughs> they lost 25 games. I guess it wasn't 25 teams, but some of them beat them twice. But we're the only team that lost to Georgia in this whole conference. We're the only one. So I, I'm just – I'm tired of the – of the, hey, why, why are y'all doubting us? We're doubting you because you have given us time and time and time of example of why you should be doubted. That's the problem. And so go out there and prove, we want you to prove us wrong. We, I, I hate the Alabama fan 
that's on um, various sites right now saying, um, you know, maybe we should decline an NCAA tournament. You brought this up to our text chain. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Are you I mean, that's minds? that's <laughs> like, good Lord. Why that's, would you do that? I can't, Why even, would you do that? I can't even believe we're talking about it. It's so that's like the bull. We're <laughs> on your side. But see, I think it's okay for the fans to be like, hey, look, what the hell? What the hell was that? You know, right. and it's not like this is just these are isolated incidents. We now have this team is lost. Is it are they nine, 19 and 12 now or 19 and 13? I, I can't remember off the top of my head. We have a losing record in the in 2022. That's a fact. We have <laughs> a losing record in 2022. Well, uh, since January 1st, since we beat Tennessee, we beat Tennessee in the final game of, of 2021 to open the SEC season. We beat Tennessee, which was a great win. I would argue now that was the height of the season. You know, oh, I, I, the, beat Tennessee to end 2021. We had beaten Gonzaga just three weeks before. Uh, and, and in 2022, we now have a losing record. We've lost one more game than we've won this year and we're now into march but you know about the not declining the nca bid that that's just so ludicrous stupid uh but this is true look i I don't want it to be all all depressing because there's a macro sense and a micro sense okay and 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 the best way to describe that is is I'm, i'm sitting in rain right now there's climate and there's weather some people don't know this but those are two different things climate and weather are two different things. Weather is what is happening today, right now, as we speak. It's raining here in uh, here in Daphne, Alabama. It's raining. Macro sense climate means how often does it rain in 365 days? Do you have a wet climate or a dry climate measured by how often does it rain over the course of a year? That's macro versus micro. Macro sense our basketball team, our basketball program is is going great. It really is. We have a good coach. He's young. He wants to be here. He's recruiting well. We're building a new arena. We have an exciting recruiting class coming in. We have a five-star that was injured all year. We'll get back healthy uh, for next season. In the macro sense, Alabama basketball is going great. The climate is fine. But the weather, the micro sense, it's raining. It's raining. It's raining. It's stor- Today sucks. <laughs> Today sucks. A, a few of the weather... We've had some bad weather, (laughs) and it sucks, and I'm ready for the spring and some sunshine, which basically means next year. But it's okay to differentiate between climate and weather. It's okay to say, hey, we have a climate problem, but it's sunny and 72 today. Or, you know, in the grand sense of things, our basketball program is great. No one should even – remotely entertain the idea that we need a new coach or or that we need to get rid of 13 guys and bring in 13 new ones. No, no. We need some fixes. We need to put the car in the shop. We don't need to drive it off a cliff and hope it explodes and defraud the insurance company. We, we, we don't need to do that. We just need to put the car in the shop and then it'll be fine. Jimmy, um, the weather was so bad last night. James Spann did the report from his own basement. <coughs> That's how bad the weather was last night. But uh, now I need to tell everybody about uh, betonline.net. It's that time of year where college basketball is is going full tilt. The college basketball tournament is upon us. From all the latest odds, contests, and player props, BetOnline is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. BetOnline remains the best spot for your for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. It's not just basketball. They got everything you want. Any sport. And it's your continued source for all sporting wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions. Bet online is where the game starts. So, Jimmy, um, you know, I mean, last night I just kept having all these things run through my head like, God, if we were playing the Washington Generals tomorrow, I bet we'd be a six and a half point underdog. And at the end of the game, we will have lost by seven just because we would, we would screw our, our Alabama betters over and we'd be covered in buckets of confetti. You know how they just throw confetti on people randomly through the – I don't know. That may not have been funny, but I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but, look, here, here here's another thing I tweeted last night. 
I am happy Nate Oates is our coach. I am happy we defeated Gonzaga, Baylor, Tennessee, LSU, Houston, Arkansas at the, the height of their run. I'm, ha I'm happy we did all that. I'm happy we win the NCAA tournament. I'm very happy about that. That's going to be a nice little notch in the in the bedpost. I'm also happy this season. I'm also happy this season's almost over, and I think it could very well be over if we play Thursday at eleven ten. I think it could be very well be over Thursday by one fifty. Just here, you just caught off. Uh, you just in silence with my awesomeness. Well, uh, no, no, my, my my feed broke up just a little bit right when you were saying we we could uh you know lose by you know be out the whole season might be over by one fifteen on on Thursday, which in some case will be really put it this way. This is how I'm tired of the cliche of uh well you know you never know what this team is going to do because actually we've lost three or four or something games in a row now, so three. it's it's almost predictable now they're they're going to lose, but but this is true. I'm upset and frustrated like everybody else is. I mean, I try to stay calm and try to stay even-handed and, and look at the big picture. That's true, but I get frustrated and disappointed like everybody else. And this is this is how I feel now. When the bracket comes out Sunday and we're going to be in it, we're going to be a six or a seven or something like that, the bracket's going to come out and it's going to say first round, Alabama versus Michigan. And, and the first game I pick on the whole sheet is going to be, well, I'm picking Michigan. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I will I will fill that out before I get to circling the ones beating the 16s. I'm going to go, well, I'm picking against Alabama because uh, that's how I feel. And I'm telling you, I am right now as we speak. I'm picking against Alabama in the first round in my bracket just because that's how I feel. And uh, and, and you know what that means? We'll, we'll probably be in the Sweet 16. No, no, it doesn't mean that. I mean, that's another thing. I'm sorry. You talk about cliches. <laughs> You're right. I mean, we keep talking about the only thing that's predictable about, about this team is it's unpredictable. No, I think it's pretty, pretty it's really pretty clearly predictable now. We we have a losing record in, in 2022. So and it is getting only, not only have we lost three in a row, I would say we've lost to three if if not just average teams, barely well, LSU's above average team. LSU's not bad, but they're not great. We didn't. It's not like we had a losing streak to the top four seeds in in the, this SEC tournament. Whoever we play in the first round is probably as good as L. That's true. You Vanderbilt. Know. Vanderbilt played the first. The, they played Wednesday night. Jimmy. They played oh, Wednesday. Van, night. Vanderbilt's bad. That's what I'm saying about giving up 46 and 14 minutes to Vanderbilt is just ridiculously bad. They're not. They're not good. Even Pippen. We make Pippen. We make Pippen look like his dad. He's not. By the way, he's is, is he he's the most? Not. I wish we somebody had a Michael Jordan Jr. on their team so they could straighten that kid up. Is there anybody le less likable in college basketball right now than Scottie Pippen Jr.? I mean, seriously. You know, it, I don't. I, I he's he frustrates me. Uh, what's more frustrating is the officials. He seems to get LeBron treatment out there to. <laughs> An extent. I mean, but he does this he, all the time. He's just like flopping around. He looks like he should be out in front of a used car dealership. He's a flopper. I, I think my favorite line, I think it's when we played him the first time. Somebody on some board, you know, posted or tweeted that, you know, Scott, Scotty Pippen needs to be playing soccer in Europe, you know, <laughs> floppers. <laughs> but that, that was, and, and that's, that's how he is. And he, he's the kind of guy that gets 10 calls. And then maybe there was a foul that was missed, and he'll complain like, like, like the neighbor's dog just bit him in the throat. I mean, I already you know, kind of didn't like the pippings. Dude, you just got in gift calls, you know. So he is frustrating to watch, but you know, I, I, it, it doesn't bother me as bad as it bothers others. But yeah, he's he's frustrating to watch, and he's a good player. He is good, but he's very he's, good. He's not a lottery pick, and 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 I, I'll tell you, there's better players in this league, like, like Oscar Shibway, who's good. Shibway's great. Walker Kessler's great. Jabari Smith is unbelievably good. He doesn't act like that. No, and Jimmy, I think Scottie Pippen's great. And when you know, in like 15 years, he's going to be hell at Papa Shot because he's gotten so used to just standing there and shooting free throws. Um, yeah. He's just going to be. He's going to win a bunch of bar bets. But he's you know, drawn. I, 
fouls in the whole country, which is an amazing stat. You know, there's 300 teams. Yeah. There's 300 teams. So that's what 300 times five. That's 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 what, what like 15 thousand starters in college basketball and he, he's he he draws the most fouls of anybody in the sport that's impressive and all the more frustrating that he thinks he gets fouled a whole lot more than he does and and then you know? there's the uh the uh the big tall white guy who got tangled up with um jq just for a second and he went to the floor as if he were sprayed in the face with agent orange directly and, and he just covered up his face, and it was so sad. And all I can think is that mu this must be – this flopping stuff is something that's taught to them. And until the officials say, we're not falling for that shit, it's going to continue to be taught to them. And um, But it was – that was BS. And I don't want it to take away from the disaster that was the Alabama collapse because, the the yeah, the fouls played a role. But, I mean, that's not what yeah. caused it. They're a likable bunch in every sport, frankly. I'm a big fan of Vandy baseball, largely, but, but that they're like the only unlikable Vanderbilt team ever. <laughs> Even the, the football team that called out our football team, we were when the guy said it like, yeah. and he said it in such a Michael Jackson esque voice, he was like, Alabama, you're next. We were like, that's so adorable. I love this, his <laughs> confidence. I think they had beaten Kansas State too. I think they had beaten Kansas State That's right. to get the last Biden. second in the last second. Yeah, yeah. So well, it wasn't like they blew him out. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. We will be back on uh, Sunday afternoon after the selection show. We are going to make the NCAA tournament. I'll leave you with that positive note. We're not declining the bid. I'll let the crazies who say that be crazy but um yeah we'll be back sunday and until then everybody i'm gonna go out in the snow in columbus ohio and just stick my face in it i guess and try and find something more enjoyable than what was last night but until then roll tight everybody roll tight